Frank Zappa took creative risks that few musicians would even consider. He also wrote experimental classical music and gallivanted around the world. But Frank Zappa's life wasn't always rosy. His upbringing was rocky, and his family life was also tough. Here's the tragic story of Frank Zappa. A Biohazardous Upbringing Frank Zappa probably should have spent his childhood in a hazmat suit. As Zappa revealed in his autobiography, his father Francis worked at a military factory that manufactured poisonous gas during World War II and would regularly give Frank things like mercury, gas masks, and used lab equipment to play with. Perhaps not coincidentally, Zappa grappled with asthma, frequent earaches, and sinus troubles as a child, and the cures were almost worse than the ailments. Following Sicilian tradition, his parents poured hot olive oil in his ears to remedy earaches, while a doctor tried to fix the sinus issues by inserting radium pellets into Frank's sinus cavity with a long wire. Yikes! Nomad, arsonist, dropout. As a kid, Zappa's family moved frequently due to his dad's job with the military. According to the New York Times, Zappa attended six different high schools by the time he was 15. Zappa became a bit of a loner, turning to experimental music and even more experimental chemistry as his hobbies. After he almost burned his high school down, though, Zappa was threatened with expulsion and gave up the hobby. Not long after, he also gave up on higher learning entirely. After enrolling in two different junior colleges and briefly studying classical music, Zappa got married and embarked on a series of odd jobs and musical gigs, including writing music for low-budget films and making appearances on variety shows. After an affair derailed his marriage, however, Zappa seemed to be going nowhere fast, except to jail. After he was arrested on indecency charges in a sting operation that led to a lifelong distrust of authority and a passion for free speech and artists' rights. Dirty words don't exist. This is a fantasy that is manufactured by religious fanatics and government organizations to keep people stupid. Mothers of Invention In 1965, Zappa joined an up-and-coming band called The Soul Giants. They soon changed their name to The Mothers and then the Mothers of Invention. They quickly gained a worldwide cult following for Zappa's genre-defying songs, which lampooned every segment of society as hypocritical and shallow, including people who were self-described freaks like Zappa. This wasn't all a put-on. Zappa clearly didn't suffer fools gladly. The Telegraph claimed that Zappa viewed humanity with contempt and deemed social interactions, quote, a waste of time. And his actions sometimes backed up that idea. When touring with his bands, Zappa stayed in separate, nicer hotels from the other members, and he allegedly looked down on his fans because he didn't think they understood his music. He told Rolling Stone, People are stupid. They never stop to question things. Needless to say, this didn't always go over well with fans. In 1971, the Mothers of Invention went on a legendarily disastrous tour of Europe. During a show in Switzerland, someone in the crowd fired a flare gun, sparking a fire that burned the venue to the ground and inspired the Deep Purple song Smoke on the Water. And just a week later, a concert goer named Trevor Howell jumped on stage and attacked Zappa. Apparently jealous because his girlfriend was a big fan, Howell threw Zappa off the stage into a concrete orchestra pit 15 feet below. Zappa suffered multiple broken bones and head injuries, a temporarily paralyzed arm, and a crushed larynx. The incident permanently lowered his voice, and for the rest of his life he would limp and suffer back pain. Daddy Despot If being a fan of Zappa was hard, being a family member wasn't always a treat either. His second wife, Gail, said that the key to keeping their marriage together was talking to each other as little as possible. Everything had to be done according to his demands, even to the point of letting one of his groupies move into the house with them. Zappa also had his own views about parenting, saying, The more boring a child is, the more the parents, when showing off the child, receive adulation for being good parents. And he didn't want boring kids, one reason why he famously gave all four of them such unusual names – Moon Unit, Dweezil, Amit, and Diva. He allowed his kids almost complete freedom to do whatever they wanted, except one thing – spend time with their dad, who reportedly always put his music first. His daughter Moon Unit grew so desperate to see him that she wrote him a note proposing that they get together professionally. That ended up being the only top 40 hit of Zappa's career, Valley Girl. But Moon told People, I had no idea it was going to be such a big hit. I wanted to spend some time with my father. Making Enemies Despite his human flaws, Zappa had plenty of admirers. 
In 1985, Zappa earned accolades when he famously testified before Congress in favor of free speech and artists' rights in an effort to fight off music censorship. The PMRC demands are the equivalent of treating dandruff by decapitation. And he had legions of fans in Eastern Europe, where his music was a focal point for political and intellectual freedom for counterculture dissidents fighting against communist dictators. In fact, he was so beloved in the Czech Republic that in 1990, after the country gained its independence, Czech President Václav Havel hosted Zappa in Prague and appointed him as the Special Ambassador to the West on Trade, Culture and Tourism. Unfortunately, Zappa had his share of enemies, and the appointment led to an international incident after U.S. Secretary of State James Baker successfully demanded Zappa be stripped of his title. Baker warned the Czech Republic, you can do business with the United States or you can do business with Frank Zappa. Why the animosity? Petty revenge. Baker's wife, Susan, had been one of the co-founders of the music censorship movement before Zappa ripped her and her movement in front of Congress. If it looks like censorship and it smells like censorship, it is censorship no matter whose wife is talking about it. It's censorship. Family Drama in 1990, Zappa was diagnosed with inoperable prostate cancer. Treatments initially shrunk the tumor, but it rebounded, leading to his death in 1993, just weeks after he released his acclaimed final album, a compilation of classical compositions called The Yellow Shark. He was only 52. Before dying, he instructed his wife Gail to sell everything and get out of the music business, which he found corrupt. Instead, she did the opposite, becoming what Rolling Stone called the exacting, often litigious gatekeeper of the Zappa family business. She demanded royalties from anyone who played Frank's music publicly and sent cease and desist letters to cover bands, accusing them of identity theft. Before her own death in 2015, Gail arranged to have Frank's estate unequally divided among their four children based on who she thought was most capable of managing it. Amit and Diva each received 30% of the Zappa family trust, while Dweezil and Moon each received only 20%. As a result, Dweezil and Moon need permission from their two younger siblings to use or profit from their father's music or likeness. At one point, Dweezil, a professional musician who frequently covers his father's songs, actually received a cease and desist letter from his own family for using the name Zappa Plays Zappa. To avoid a lawsuit, Dweezil ditched the merchandise and renamed his show 50 Years of Frank. Dweezil Zappa plays whatever the f he wants. The Cease and Desist Tour. We think his father would have approved.